This program is dedicated to the brave men and women of the United States Armed Forces, past, present, and future. I'm Keith Warren. I'm a hunter. What do you think of that? Look at that. Woo! A fisherman. Two fish on at one time? Oh my gosh! A conservationist. Hey, let go of that nipple. You're done. You're finished. A family man. Life is good. I love you, baby. Love you, too. And I'm proud to be a deer farmer. I'm taking a road trip, and we're going behind the scenes of today's most innovative deer farmers and wildlife management operations in North America. This is Deer and Wildlife Stories. If you're a deer farmer, or if you're a wannabe deer farmer, you need to pay attention to today's show. And the reason why is because we're going to talk about how do you turn a profit. That's right, how do you turn a profit in something that, well, most people start deer farming, well, just as a hobby. On today's show, we're up in Ohio at S&S Whitetail Galore. We're with Billy Sage, and Billy's been in the deer farming business for 20 years. He started out as a hobbyist, just like most of us did, and he's turned it into a very lucrative business. He'll be sharing his secrets how he did it, and we'll be showing you some giant bucks right here from S&S Whitetail Galore. You are a serious businessman, and I want you to kind of share where you've kind of built your business, your niche. A lot of people in the deer business, they treat this business as a hobby, and they get a little bit frustrated uh, when they can't turn a profit. And they treat it like they're hunting, they're fishing, or whatever, uh, they're hobbies and hobbies are not designed typically to make money. That's what you spend your hard-earned money on. The deer business is like any other business. You work hard, you work seven days a week, you have to be passionate, and if you treat it that way, then you have a chance to be successful. If you treat it like a hobby, you have to expect less in the end. How do you and your customers, that's the important thing, your customers, how do they maintain the value of their deer? How have you done? It goes back to pedigree, the proven, proven, proven production. Sometimes you'll see a big old buck, may be a fluke, may not be a fluke. But if you see big buck after big buck out of proven, proven, proven production, year after year after year, DNA back, well then what has happened will probably happen again. And if you get your numbers right on your females, you get enough of them, the mothers, the sisters, to famous producing bucks, then your odds go up. It's pretty simple. What I like may not be what the industry likes. Okay. I have to target what the industry likes. Okay, that makes you get, sense. You, you get frustrated sometimes because people don't like what you like. But in business, you gotta target industry-wide what the people like. Max Bow, one of the founding sires in the industry, he sold millions. Well, for some reason, people like Max Bow. It's his proven production and maybe some other tangible. But still, I have to target that. I can't get self-centered. I have to go after what the market likes. And so to make money at this industry, what you have done is you've gone after the deer that not necessarily that you like, but that the industry and the dollars like. That's right. If y'all went to deer conventions, you're gonna see a ton of big deer. That's right. Okay, and a ton of buyers out there. There's people going to these auctions and buying. But I think it's important to, to, to stop people before they buy and say, wait a minute, it's who you buy that deer from. It's like any other business, service after the sale. This industry is as diverse as anything I've ever seen. You go to an auction, you may be sitting beside a guy that works five days a week, makes a decent salary. He's trying to buy a nice deer. He may be sitting at the same table with a billionaire or a millionaire. They're trying to buy a deer. There can be a living made whether it be just selling pasture deer, high-end breeder stock, some medium-range females to the high-end females. But that being said, it's still a business if you expect to make a profit. If you want to sell the most pasture deer, then you have to work the hardest. If you want to sell the best breeder stock, then you have to work the hardest. Business is business and always will be business. And that's just the way it is. I'm Billy Sage with SNS Whitetail Galore, and you're watching Deer and Wildlife Stories with Keith Warren. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by Bruton Easy Pull Trailers, Deer Guardian Misting Systems, 
Game Management Software, the North American Deer Farmers Association, Record Rack Deer Feeds, Whitetail Sales and Service, and Newport Labs. If you're going to make money in the deer farming business, you need to understand pedigrees. There's a program GMS Software has that will help you basically build a deer. You can go through the programs and you can take the pedigrees of proven sires like they have here at SNS Whitetail and you can input them into your system and into your herd, wherever your herd is, and see what that pedigree would look like. And so you can see a proven producing pedigree, put it with whatever pedigree you've got, and see what it would look like. And it's just something by GMS that makes deer farming and predicting what you've got a little bit easier. On our farm, pretty simple what we do. If a buck gets big on our farm, it is our desire that everybody in the industry will know who his mother and we'll know who his father is. The worst thing that could happen for this farm is for us to get a big old monster, monster, beautiful, drop dead gorgeous buck with a bad pedigree. We try to surround this farm with the mothers and the sisters of all of the best producing bucks of all time. Give me a 300 inch buck, but yet he has the pedigree to match. I'll take him over a 500 inch buck that I don't even know who his mother is or his foundation. Here's a question for you. Let's just say somebody's got a really giant deer and his name is whatever, Big John. Okay, and Big John is a giant and he goes to a sale. Can you uh, predict what's gonna happen with the value of that deer? Yeah, absolutely. In our business, it's not who's your daddy, it's who's your mama. And if people don't know his mama, the word Big John means nothing. Let's talk about animal husbandry and how important that is. Well, that's absolutely uh, number one. Without good animal husbandry, you're not going to grow a big deer. You're not going to have healthy deer. You're not going to provide healthy deer for your customers. You have to check them constantly, again and again and again. Clean. Whenever you think you got it clean enough, clean it one more time. Every day, even Christmas Day, will go, I'd say, no less than three hours without every deer being looked at. And we also walk the pens, rain or shine, snow or sleet. We walk the pens. It's just so, so, so important. You lose one good deer, you've lost a lot of money. And more importantly, you've lost a year. And you lose a year in genetics, then you're behind the eight ball. So your farm is really a family affair, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, my son, he runs the office. Mitzi, she kind of runs everything along with me. Kaylee, my daughter, she does a lot of the bottle feeding or whatever else we need her to do. And she's been doing that basically all her life, hasn't she? Yeah, ever since she could hold a bottle, took two hands. And then you've got a, a help around here and she might as well be your daughter. Yeah, Katie, Dee Buckner's daughter out of Texas. Been a wonderful help and she's kind of like a daughter. I like scaring her. <laughs> there you go, and then you got a, a hand around here helping yeah, out Nate. Absolutely, Nate's been with us for a long time now and uh, first class. Well, you know what? In the deer farming business, it's like you're an overnight success. It only took 20 years of overnights, but in 20 years, you're an overnight success, huh? Yeah, that's right, yeah. When I started, I was blonde-headed, and it got a little brown. Now it's kind of getting that lighter tint now. So. Like I said, overnight success. Absolutely. <laughs> you better have patience if you want to make it in deer farming. <laughs> no joke. We always talk about insects and trying to keep the numbers down so you have a little bit more calm deer herd. Well, years ago when we were here, Billy got rid of insects with a very labor-intensive way. It did a pretty good job, but it doesn't do as good a job as a system that he has today. The system that he has today is absolutely incredible. It's the Deer Guardian Misting System. And what the Deer Guardian does, it winds up at a preset time around the entire perimeter of the property. It goes off and they have spray nozzles that spray just a small insecticide out in the air. And what that does, it drifts through the pins. You can see it going right behind me, drifts through the pins. And it reduces the insects well to a point that I haven't seen an insect out here, period. It's the Deer Guardian misting system. And that's just one reason why Billy's deer are so calm. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by DNA Solutions and the North American Deer Registry, New Dart, Shock Effect Probiotics, and Keith Warren's Texas Hidden Springs Ranch, the best value for Texas trophy deer hunting.
All right, so tell me, what is a typical day like here at s and Whitetail Galore? Well, basically, as daylight's breaking, we're in the barn. Katie, she's getting bottles ready, warming bottles. I try to do a pen check right at daylight myself. Shortly after that, and Nate comes in, he starts mixing feed. By that time, Katie, Kaylee, my daughter, they will have bottle fed, you know, 60 fawns, a lot of bottle washing, a lot of cleaning. Next thing you know, it's lunchtime. Take a little break and basically everything starts over. Well, folks, right here, you can see these are the one-year-olds. Looking at the one-year-olds, everybody's good. Yeah, they're, they're consistent for sure. And gosh, a lot of yearlings, 15 to 20 points and some more and five by five frames, six by six frames. I get mixed up myself. I mean, by far our most consistent group ever. They're absolutely beautiful. They're symmetrical is what I like. I mean, they're pretty deer. Right, we're very happy with them. Pedigrees are deeper this year, bred a little stronger, and we would hope that it would be that way because at least that's the way we planned it. Okay. Well, that's what the one-year-olds look like this year. I want you to show me what the uh, Southern Express looks like, and then we're gonna go take a look at the big boys. How's that? Uh, I hope you're ready to see something big. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, Keith, there's Southern Express. Gosh, he's just an absolute giant this year. Unbelievable time length. Never dreamed that a Texas cross could put that kind of antlers across on a northern doe like that. It's just almost beyond belief. We got 17 buck fawns ourselves out of him and he bred the best does around the country. Uh, I look for him to be one of the top producing young deer, if not the top producing young deer of all time. I mean, it's just pretty phenomenal the offspring we have out of this big joker. Without a doubt, Southern Express was the most beautiful big yearling everybody in the industry was talking about last year. And I think it's interesting to point out, folks, is that most people will not use a yearling buck to do breeding because he's not proven, but when he has a pedigree as deep as that buck right there at Southern Express, there's no doubt that uh, he's gonna be a big producer. And this coming summer, I think you're gonna see a lot of big buck come out of Southern Express. It's time for viewer feedback, brought to you by the Deer and Wildlife Stories YouTube channel. Michael from Texas writes, I just purchased a ranch and want to put up a high fence. Can you offer any advice or consult with me regarding fencing and purchasing superior genetic deer? I know there's lots of people out there with opinions. I want to know what you think. Michael, thanks for writing and you are right. There are a lot of people out there that have got a lot of opinions. I appreciate you asking me about mine. And before I can answer that, I need to ask you a couple of things. First off, everybody has a budget. So I need to know what is your budget and I need to know what your goals are and we can start from there. And uh, if you'd like to get a hold of me, Michael or anybody else want to get a hold of me, all you need to do is shoot me an email. I'll be happy to get back with you. But really, before you can even begin a management program, you have to look at what's the budget and what are your goals? Got a question about deer farming or a comment about the show? I'd love to hear from you. Make sure and shoot me an email and also watch all of our programs and outtakes as well right here on the Deer and Wildlife Stories YouTube channel. Here's a set of antlers right here off a deer by the name of Energizer, one of the greatest deer of all time. And he's alive right here in Ohio at s, &S Whitetail Galore. Last year we asked people to get onto my Facebook page and guess what he scored. This is about 590 inches of antlers. This year he's bigger, he's better looking, he's an unbelievable deer, but I want you to get on my Facebook page and rather than score, I want you to tell me how many points he has. Now, we're gonna show you a video of him in the field, but this is what he had last year, right here. And at this particular farm, they have a saying, it's not who's your daddy, it's who's your mama. So whoever gets on the Facebook page and guesses the right score, or the, I should say the right amount of points, is gonna get that t-shirt right there. Doe up, courtesy of s, &S Whitetail Galore. Who's your mama? How you doing? You know, we talk about animal husbandry, and last year we were out here, I wanna cut away and show you a video of a doe that she had been rehabilitated. She kind of ran funny and she had a broken neck and for a year she was in a sling over here getting rehabilitated, uh, saving the deer's life. Well, this right here is her baby and this right here is Princess. And think about that now. Somebody that loves an animal so much that this deer's mama had a broken neck, they rehabilitated it and bred her and she had a baby. And look how sweet the baby is. Folks, this is Princess. 
I think that's pretty neat. All right, so this is the pen. This is the big buck pen, and folks, every deer farmer in the country ought to walk in this pen right here. And the reason why is because there are more 300 to 600 inch, that's right, 600 inch deer in this pen right here than any other pen in the country. And we're gonna show them to you right now. These bucks in this pen, you gotta keep in mind, there are people that travel literally all over the country. They fly into Columbus and then drive over here to see these bucks. And these are absolutely incredible. So who's that buck with the long brow tines right there? That's Max Bow Ranger. Really? Yep. And that's an old buck. I mean, he's been around a long time and he's still got headgear like that? Nine years old and has his best rack ever. He is beautiful. His mother and sire, Orange Two, Max Bow, Cross is legendary. She's never missed. Everything she produced is big. How long do you think those brow tines are? Gotta be 18 inches. We'll know in another month or two, but as long as I've ever seen. He's absolutely beautiful too. Somewhere around that 30 inches inside and super tall. One of the finest frames of any age deer I've ever seen and he's nine years old. Man, look at him at nine years old. So much for the folks who say they top out at six years old or seven years old, huh? Yeah, no kidding. So there are different age bucks in here that ranging from what to what? Well, m most of them are a couple two-year-olds, most of them three-year-olds and then Energizer and Maxbow Ranger. Okay, so Energizer, holy smokes. There's Energizer right there. We call him the Gentle Giant. And how old is he this year? He's five. He's pretty amazing this year. Got his best look ever and just words can't describe him. You just have to see him. That deer right there is incredible. Last year, folks, I believe he had, well, he had over 100 points. I think it was 104 points on his rack. But this year, I mean, that's now, Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, obviously. And some people like typicals, some people like non-typicals. Well, I don't know anybody that's not gonna look like that deer. I mean, that deer is absolutely beautiful. I like typicals, but he is a typical, non-typical buck. Yeah, I mean, he's just got a giant frame. He's probably 35 inches inside, and that's just what makes him so special. How heavy do you think the antlers are on him? Oh, God, 35 to 40 pounds right now in velvet. And for those you at home that think, how in the world can a deer hold it up? That deer right there has got to be 400 pounds, wouldn't you think? Yeah, well, when he was three year old, when we cut him, we put him in a scale house and he weighed 418. And he's five now, so I'm hey. sure he hadn't lost any weight. And so you really can't tell how big he is until you either get him on a, on a stretcher and you're working on him, yeah. or until you hold up the antlers. And I'm telling you, when you go in Billy's office here, you hold up the antlers, or you're at any deer sale, and you hold up the antlers, you can really gauge how big he is. Okay, there's a black tagman over there, just raised his head up, who is that? We call him Black Ranger, he's a three year old. Oh my gosh, okay, so is he a son of Maxbow Ranger? No, he's actually a son of Dream Ranger, and Dream Ranger's out of Maxbow Ranger on Fleece Christie, uh, which is a extremely famous cross, and then on the bottom of the pedigree, he has Maxbow Ranger's womb sister, with Blue 37, and she's maybe the grandest dam of all, which is just a pretty incredible pedigree with Maxpo Ranger on top and Maxpo Ranger's womb sister on bottom. That is an incredible pedigree. Very, very unique. Yeah, and we, we just, we try to, to make unique crosses, but we also, in the same time, try to stay in the best lines in the country, and you see it there, you know, 32 to 35 inches inside, somewhere, you know, in that range, and the biggest three-year-old frame we've ever raised. And he's pretty. See, there's a lot of people that, you know, have got these high scoring deer and all that really aren't pretty, but your deer have got the frames right. and the look. And that is what a lot of people now are looking for. Now, folks, it, you know, you may be thinking, well, you've got people, I think a lot of times get caught up in score. You know, what's your score? What's your score? Anymore, I mean, score isn't everything. Look is what it's about now. That's what people are trying to grow. I mean, big, framey deer that have got the look. And that deer right there has got the look. Right. He's, how old again? He's three. And, and, he, and he's still got over 30 points on his head. He doesn't look like it. And he's gonna be a high scoring deer, but you know, no energizer, but he's got enough score combined with look to make him very desirable. Oh yeah, and you've got semen on the farm. Somebody wanna buy some semen in the front of you? We sure do. Okay. My goodness, what a beautiful deer. <laughs> he's got it all. <laughs> this is incredible. I am uh, amazed every time I come up here Beautiful people, beautiful property, and unbelievable deer. And folks, I'm gonna tell you something. If you're a deer farmer, pay attention to this. 
uh, because you you need to come up here. You need to take a look at what's going on here. Billy and Mitzi Sage lead the industry. They are on the top leaderboard every year at every auction. They're up there in the top and they are some world-class people. Yeah, they're deer world-class, but they're world-class people. Deer farming is an investment. It's a labor of love. It's an investment in time and money. And if you're gonna get in the deer farming business for a business, you owe it to yourself to contact my friend, Billy Sage. Give him a telephone number. 740-569-4063. And remember, it's quality, quality, quality. And did I say quality? And deal with a quality individual. Billy, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I appreciate y'all watching. We'll see you next week. If you'd like to watch full episodes of our program 24-7 online in full high definition, log on to my website at deerandwildlifestories.com. There you'll find the shows, but you'll also find a lot of outtakes and behind the scenes videos as well. That's deerandwildlifestories.com. Reproductive services for Deer and Wildlife Stories are provided by Whitetail Genetics. <laughs>